into the 2020-2021 Conejo Valley Unified School District's Focus on the Arts program. This exciting arts adventure is funded by two grants from generous partners, including Access Arts, an initiative of TO Arts, along with Conejo Schools Foundation. Have fun, and remember, you can work at your own pace. Don't forget to use that pause button. And this is family fun for the whole family, so gather everyone around and you can all work together. And if you don't have the materials, you can improvise. That means use what you got. And no matter what, remember, even though we're apart, we're connected by art. Hi, it's me, Mrs. Friedman, one of the art teachers in the Caneo Valley Unified School District. I'm just sitting here listening to some classical music. Perhaps you've heard music like this before, often heard in symphonies and other beautiful places like at the ballet or maybe even in the dentist office as you're waiting for the dentist to work on your mouth. It's calming. It's complex. Listen with me for a minute. Close your eyes. What do you feel when you hear this music? Do you see any shapes, any colors? It's exciting at some points, it gets loud. When it calms down, it gets a little slower. It's constantly changing. This music is beautiful and classic. And we're gonna talk a little bit today about classical music and art. So I asked you, do you see colors? What do you feel? How does the music make you see in your vision, in your inner mind's eye? I can tell you there's an artist, a very famous artist who does see colors and who sees feelings and feels and hears the feelings from the music. We're gonna talk about that artist today. First, I'm going to read to you a story that will tell you all about the artist and a really cool condition that his brain has that allows him to feel colors and hear colors in classical music. This is The Noisy Paint Box, a Caldecott honor book written by Barb Rosenstock with illustrations by Mary Grand Pre, who's also the illustrator for the Harry Potter novels. Vasya Kandinsky spent his days learning to be a proper Russian boy. He studied bookfuls of math, science, and history. He practiced piano scales to the marching click of the metronome. A metronome keeps you in line with your rhythm. He sat stiff and straight at dressed-up dinners while the grown-ups talked and talked and talked. Vasya's well-off world was perfectly polite, until the day his aunt gave him a small wooden paint box. Every proper Russian boy should appreciate art, said auntie. She showed Vasya the correct way to mix colors on the paint box palette. Vasya mixed red with yellow. Then he mixed red with blue. As the colors changed, Vasya heard a whisper. Hiss, louder. Hiss, then louder still. Hiss. What's that sound? asked Vasya. I don't hear a thing, said Auntie. Vasya listened as his brush stirred and swished. The swirling colors trilled like an orchestra tuning up for a magical symphony. Mama, Papa, called Vasya. What a noisy paint box. Silly Vasily, said Papa. Stop being foolish, said Mama. Vasya painted the sound of colors. He spun a bright lemon circle onto the canvas. It clicked like the highest notes on the keyboard. He brushed a powerful navy rectangle that vibrated deeply like the lowest cello strings. He tossed up jagged swashes of blaring crimson and added cheerful dots of burbling green, clanging orange, and tinkling violet. Vasya painted and painted until the colors went quiet. Look what I made, shouted Vasya. Is it a house? asked Auntie. Is it a flower? asked Mama. What's it supposed to be? asked Papa. It's music, said Vasya, waltzing his painting around the house. Calm down, said Mama. Do some math, 
said Papa. Heavens, said Auntie, this boy needs a proper art class. So Vasya went to art class and learned to draw houses and flowers, just like everyone else. As the years passed, Vasya finished school and studied to be a lawyer. He ignored his noisy paint box and lived the way people expected. But Vasya couldn't ignore the sounds of the color singing to him in the streets of Moscow. The canary colored mailbox whistling as he rode to work. The scarlet sunset haze ringing above the ancient Kremlin walls. An ivory chorus of snowflakes scattered on the sable collar of his overcoat. One evening, suitably steamed and starched, Vasya attended the opera. As the orchestra's music crashed around him, the colors of the noisy paint box twirled wildly in his mind. Stomping lines of vermilion and coral, caroling triangles and pistachio and garnet, thundering arches of aqua and ebony with shrill points of cobalt and saffron. Vasya heard the color singing. Vasya saw the music dancing. And Vasya was never quite as proper again. He quit his job teaching law and moved from Moscow to Munich to be a painter. He studied with this famous teacher, then that one. Is it a house? Is it a flower? What is it supposed to be? His teachers asked. Vasya wanted to paint the colors he heard, but maybe the famous teachers knew best. Once again, Vasya put houses and flowers and animals and people into his paintings just like everyone expected. The teachers were happy. Vasya was not. His artist friends understood. They too were tired of painting pretty landscapes and pretty ladies. They thought art needed to change. Art should make you feel, Vasya told them, like music. Exactly, said his friends, but none of them knew how to paint feelings. Until the day Vasya grew brave enough and invited the world to see the paintings roaring from his noisy paint box. Snapping cerulean points, crunching crimson squares, whispering charcoal lines, Vasya named these paintings after the music he loved. Improvisation, composition, accompaniment, fugue, movement, and simply, three sounds. With his noisy paint box, Vasya Kandinsky created something entirely new, abstract art. It took a long time for people to understand. Is it a house? Is it a flower? What is it supposed to be? It's my art, Vasya answered. How does it make you feel? So, did you know that some people also associate colors with numbers? <laughs> I tend to think about the color blue when I see the number four. And to me, the number nine means red. Now, these aren't rules, and it's not like I was taught this. It's just what I see when I close my eyes and I imagine the number four, I see blue. That might be different for you. You might see a different color when you think of a number, but this condition is called synesthesia. Now it's not like a medical condition where you have to go to the doctor and you have to take medicine. It's more of a phenomenon, something mysterious and interesting in the way that people process colors in their eyes and in their heads. Synesthesia is something that Kandinsky probably had. We don't really know for sure because they didn't know at the time what it was called, but now we know what it is. And it's probably what Kandinsky had, which allowed him to feel the way he felt when he heard music and then to go ahead and paint what he felt. Vasily Kandinsky was born in Moscow, Russia on December 4th, 1866. His father, also named Vasily, was a wealthy tea merchant, and his mother, Lydia, was a noblewoman with a passion for music. Vasily, or Vasya, as he was sometimes called, traveled with his family to Italy and then to Odessa, Russia, on the shore of the Black Sea, for his father's health. When he was five, his parents divorced, and Vasya lived with his aunt Elizabeth while finishing school. He attended law school in Moscow and then taught law and economics as an adult. The book that we just read is historical fiction. The dialogue is imagined, although the events are true. In his writings, Kandinsky describes hearing a hissing sound as a child when he first mixed colors in the paint box his aunt gave him. He continued experiencing colors as sounds and sounds as colors throughout his life. It's thought that Kandinsky probably had a harmless genetic condition called synesthesia, although accurate tests to detect it weren't invented yet during his lifetime. 
In people with synesthesia, one sense triggers a different sense, allowing them, for example, to hear color, see music, taste words, or smell numbers. Scientists believe those with synesthesia may have more pathways between the senses area and the brain, or that their senses communicate in ways that other people's do not. There are at least 60 different types of synesthesia, and it's estimated to occur in one out of every 5,000 individuals. As an adult, Kandinsky attended an exhibition of Claude Monet's Haystacks. The painting stunned him. It was the first time he saw art that was not realistic, and he never forgot that experience. Later, at a performance of Richard Wagner's opera, he saw wild shapes and colors in his mind as the music played. At 30, Kandinsky established himself as an artist in Germany. He was a founder of the influential art group, the Blue Rider, and he later taught the world-renowned Bauhaus School. In 1910, he painted his first completely abstract painting, which sparked a revolution in the art world. After a long, successful life as a painter, Vasily Kandinsky died on December 13, 1944, in France. Large collections of his art hang in the Guggenheim Museum and the Museum of Modern Art in New York City, the Art Institute of Chicago, and in art museums in Paris and in Moscow and Munich. Maybe someday you will go and see and hear them. Most people don't respond this way with music, but most of us all have some sort of emotional response when we hear the music. And so that is a form of synesthesia. Isn't that cool? So you can go around and talk to people and say, I have synesthesia. What about you? How's your synesthesia going? So guess what we're going to do today? (laughs) We are going to do our own Kandinsky inspired watercolor project. So here's what you'll need. You'll need a, a piece of watercolor paper that you got from your school. So you should have that already. And you're also going to need watercolors. Uh, So you'll need a brush and then also a little dish of water. And maybe even you might want to use like a paper towel on the side to blot extra paint or extra water in between your colors. Okay. I'm going to be playing some classical music. And what you're going to do is just paint what you hear. So this is kind of going to be a way for you to reach inside your brain as you're listening to the music, you're going to then paint what you hear. And what you paint might be very different from what I paint or from what your friends paint or your sister paints if she's with you or your brother paints if he's with you, okay? So don't worry about if it's right. There is no wrong answer. And that is what's so exciting about painting in the style of Kandinsky. Also, if you are interested in more classical music, I am excited to tell you that right here in Thousand Oak is the New West Symphony, the resident symphony of the Civic Arts Plaza Bank of America Performing Arts Center right here. That's so exciting. So when we're able to go to the theater again, you can get tickets to buy seats in order to listen to the beautiful music that this that the New West Symphony can play for you. And what's really neat about the New West Symphony is they have lots of different themes of their symphonies. They might explore music from another country or they might explore music from um, one particular composer. So you can really learn about classical music right here in town. For now though, you can go to their website and check that out at newwestsymphony.org. And they have some um, examples of their pieces on their website. And you just can go ahead and take a listen and learn all about the symphony that we have right here in Thousand Oaks. That's so exciting. If you play an instrument or you're learning how to play an instrument, you can also do this art project with people in your household. Maybe you can play something on your instrument Uh, And then have other people paint while you play and see what happens. It's really amazing to see the beautiful art results when you have art and music working together. All right, let's do art. So we are first going to start with doing some black line work. You'll need either a Sharpie or a black crayon. Do not use a washable black marker because then it will just spread everywhere. So I'm going to stick to my crayon because it's thicker than my Sharpie. So when I talk about line work, what I mean is I'm talking about black lines, uh, shapes, figures, uh, patterns, anything that could also remind you of music. 
So I'm going to talk it out a little bit and then we're going to get started and you can either follow along with me or work on your own by listening to the classical music. This is Mozart's Piano Concerto number 23 and I want you to think about what you hear and how it makes you feel. So first we're gonna start with our line work. I'm going to do lines that are inspired by music. So perhaps I'll make some straight lines to represent the staff of sheet music. You can even do line work that reminds you of instruments. For example, this is kind of like a guitar. You can also do black dots to represent music notes. You could even do the opening of a guitar or it could even be like a drum. You might do some wavy lines if you hear some lines that remind you of squiggles in the music. That's like movement. And then you can even do some other figures that might remind you of other instruments. For example, this could be a piano. Once you feel like your paper is filled and balanced with different line and line figures, you may start your painting. So I took my time to balance it out. I have line work that's going in different directions. I have open line work. I have closed line work that's solid and filled in. And I have some geometric shapes as well. Okay, and now the fun begins. I'm going to listen to the music and paint what I hear. You can either follow along with me or do your own and enjoy the music.
So that is my complete Kandinsky inspired art. As you can see, it went from blank page to black line work to a potpourri of colors and it's exciting to look at and the way that I listened to the music also inspired the way that I painted. So have fun with your watercolor. If you finished along with me, I can't wait to see your work. If you need to go ahead and go back and rewatch so you can hear the music again, feel free to do so if you're not done yet. I hope you had so much fun learning about Kandinsky and bravo to you. Bye-bye <laughs> now.